Tiny House Prepper. Hi everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth with Tiny House Prepper. In this video we want to talk about the proper care and maintenance of cast iron pots. Uh, ever since we started doing our, our Cooking with Thrive videos, we've actually gotten quite a few requests to do this video because people noticed that we were cooking with cast iron. So that's I figured we would give you our expertise. We've been using <laughs> cast iron for actually for quite a few years. Um, I want to talk about uh, why we really um, like using cast iron and the benefits that we have found that we have from it. Um, I basically really grew up with cast iron and Bill wasn't quite as familiar with it when we first got married but now with the fact that my skin's kind of fragile um, with the psoriasis and everything he's my main cast iron take care of her and so he, he takes care of her for me all the time now um, and I really appreciate that um, the, the pans will just simply last forever and if you take proper care of them um, they they will just last for years and years. Um, in terms of being prepared for anything that might happen, um, you can use them over fire. They're very sturdy. Now you want to be careful if they have a wooden handle. I kind of actually prefer, if I can, having ones that don't even have a wooden handle on them. But they can, basic cast iron can be used over a fire, which is nice. Um, they heat very evenly. And so the pan itself, which is thick, the thick heavy cast iron, will start to hold the heat and it distributes it nice and evenly and I find that I turn my fire down more and more all the time which helps you save fuel um, because it will hold the heat and um, it just does a wonderful job cooking things. Um, it, if, people, if we're cooking with aluminum or especially with Teflon um, you know there is a tendency when you're cooking things for at least some of the pan to possibly get into your food. Now if that happens with cast iron little bits of the iron get in there um, our bodies need iron. Um, it, it's actually kind of a good thing. Um, it's not good to have little bits of aluminum. Um, it's definitely not good to have little flaked bits or burned or overcooked bits of Teflon in your food um, if you can possibly help it. So I just feel like in a lot of ways it's um, just kind of healthier. And so um, you know, I, I've been, you know, my family grew up with cast iron, my mom grew up with cast iron, and like you said, they can just last forever. Um, we have had people uh, wonder how we can be cooking sauces and soups in it, um, even things, you know, especially things that have tomato bases. Acidic um, food. Acidic type food, mm -hmm. uh, like when I do my, my spaghetti sauce. But I'm telling you, we've done this for years, and if you take proper care of the pan, I have never had those be an issue. Mm -mm. And I've never felt like it suddenly just put tons of the pan in the food or it just has not, it just has not ever been an issue. Um, our iron levels are very healthy. So I, you know, it, it works out fine. As long as you clean it and take care of it as, properly. As long as you take care of it properly. Yeah. When it's well seasoned and cared for, um, it gets to be slick as Teflon. Very seldom do I have anything ever really stick on it. So, okay, hon. It used to be when you buy cast iron, you had to season it. It was not seasoned. Nowadays, most of the cast iron that you can buy is pre-seasoned. Um, if you want to go and buy some, I would recommend that you look for something that's, that is pre-seasoned, because then you don't have to do it yourself at home. Yeah. But like I said, the majority of it now is pre-seasoned. If you get one that's not, and you have to pre-season it, what you do is you cover the entire thing with, with a light coating. Clean it really well first. Well, sure. This yeah. is like anything you know, new. Go ahead, I'm And then sorry. you cover the entire <laughs> thing with a very light coating of oil. Now, I'm talking cooking oil here, not motor oil. Okay. Or baby oil. <laughs> or baby oil. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever cooking oil you use, cover the whole thing with cooking oil. <laughs> Put it in the oven. He's, he's really silly. I'm just suddenly picturing all this motor oil. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> putting it, put it in the, the oven at the lowest heat that you can turn the oven on and leave it there overnight. Yeah. And you may actually have to do that several times. And what that does is it bakes the oil. It opens up the pores in the metal, and it it sort of pushes and bakes the oil down into the metal. And actually, that's what gives you the the smooth surface on top. So, but if you can avoid that by buying pre-seasoned, yeah. then do that. You'd be much happier. <laughs> We've done both, and the pre-seasoned is pretty nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 
Um, now, in cleaning, <coughs> there are two cardinal rules. Yeah. One is you never, ever use dish soap. Yeah. If you do, it'll destroy the seasoning and you'll have to start over again because the, the soap cuts the oil and it, it doesn't work. And the other is every single time after you clean it, you have to oil it. And I'll, I'll go over this again. But two things, never use soap and always oil it when you're done. Yep. We've had people um, suggest to us at times, or things we've heard about, like cleaning with salt. And so, you know, we're willing to try things. We've tried sprinkling salt on it, scrubbing with it, but it didn't really seem to be necessary. It didn't necessarily do anything differently. We know people have a lot of different ways they approach things. Mm. But we've discovered that what we're showing you today kind of has just simply worked for us. Um, every now and then people have asked me, um, aren't you afraid about getting black specks in your food? Or they've had problems with having black specks in their food? Um, when the pans are really well scrubbed and well oiled, I haven't really had a problem with that. I'm not sure whether maybe there's little bits of baked on food that's like hiding on the blackness of the iron that gets kind of scraped off. I don't really think the iron itself is falling apart. And so just try really giving a super good scrub, you know, and oil it again. But we have never really had issues with that with our food. So, alrighty. Okay. So is that it on the list? That's it on the list. Okay, so <laughs> let's get started and I'll show you what I do to properly clean and maintain our cast iron. Alrighty. This frying pan was used in the oven to bake chicken. You can use them in the oven as well as on the, on the stove top. And so you see the mess here that I need to clean up that's baked on chicken with a lot of chicken grease. I'm not going to use any soap. I'm just going to... This doesn't fit in the sink, so it just fits right across there like that. So I just fill it up with water. Okay, so I fill it up with water. Now I'm just going to let it sit and soak. I don't ever use any soap on it. Um, it's amazing. It's like water and grease don't mix. You need soap to, to break up the grease. And yet it seems that somehow when it sits in the water like this, I don't know if the water affects the, the cast iron or what, but it just like releases the grease off of the cast iron when it, when it soaks. I, I don't understand how it works, but it does. So I'm going to let this sit for maybe a half hour and then I'll come back and show you how I do the rest of the cleaning. Um, the cast iron is very well seasoned so it actually has a coating of oil all over it and it just um, I think that that oil resists the water and it just like floats stuff off of the, yeah. the metal. But something like this if I would start scr scrubbing that now it would be a mess but if I just let it sit here for a half hour like this I'll show you what happens it would be neat. You know when you're making videos continuity is important <laughs> Continuity from scene to scene. So like if you have to finish the, the, the video, making the video the next day, you want to make sure you're wearing the same shirt so you don't end up changing scene, uh, shirts right in the middle of a scene. Well, some of you astute uh, viewers may realize that in the last scene, when I put the water in the, in the pan, I was all fuzzy. And now I'm all clean. <laughs> That's because... Elizabeth, how many people do you think are going to go back to the last scene to see if I was fuzzy? <laughs> I don't know. Could be. <laughs> but while while it was soaking, Elizabeth gave me a haircut. We decided to take you know take advantage of the time, so I sat down. About halfway through the haircut, all of a sudden I realized I'm in the middle of a scene. The continuity is going to be messed up. She said, "I just tell them about it. They'll get a kick out of it." So there you have it. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the, the pan that's been soaking for, what, 45 minutes. And to clean it, like I've said before, I'm not going to use any soap. Um, it has a seasoning, like Elizabeth said earlier, that's it's coated with oil, and the oil is actually saturated down into the metal a little bit. And if you use soap, it'll destroy that seasoning. It'll rust. <clears throat> it won't uh, cook things right. Uh, things will stick. So you don't want to do anything to destroy that seasoning. Um, soap is one thing. The other thing is that you need to soak it to clean it, but I discovered uh, <laughs> by making several mistakes that, that if you 
forget about it and you go to bed and you leave it sitting overnight, when you get up in the morning, that water sitting in there all day, all, all night, is not good for the seasoning and it'll take two or three uh, cleanings to bring that seasoning back up and things will stick until you get it seasoned again. So you gotta soak it, but don't let it soak too long. Don't use soap on it. Now what I use to clean it is this. This is metal. I don't know exactly what you call it, but it's metal and it does not have soap in it. It's not like a Brillo pad that has soap inside. Uh, get this at any good grocery store in the, in the cleaning products. So with that water that's in there, I just basically just take this and just start scrubbing it. I remember what that looked like in there. And this is just basically wiping out. Yeah, you're not really having to use elbow grease. What? You're not really having to scrub hard. No, I'm not scrubbing hard at all. See? I'm just wiping it out with this metal thing. Rinse it out. And there you have it. It's clean. It's amazing. It amazes me every time I do it. How all that grease can just wipe right out of there. I just don't understand it, but it works every time. So then I just dry it out. with a paper towel. Now, after you get it dry like that, then you have to, to coat it with oil again. And you have to coat it with oil every single time you use it. If you don't, things will start to stick or but rust. It's, or, it's quick and easy to coat yeah. it. So, this is just vegetable oil, whatever kind of vegetable oil you like to use. Just a couple drops is all you need. The only thing I've discovered about this is that it goes through a lot of paper towels. <laughs> so I take that oil and just wipe it in there. Now what you want to do after you get it completely coated with the oil is that you want to basically try to completely rub the oil off. Of course you won't be able to because it makes that coating, but you don't want any excess oil, loose oil rolling around in there. You want to get it as dry as you can. So try to completely rub the oil off. And there you go. Now it's a very good idea, um, at least every so often, to just heat it gently. Um, and then, you know, um, rub the oil in and then just give it a real gentle heating. That really helps maintain the seasoning. Um, that was quick and easy, as you see. It's completely clean, no soap used. And then I used to do this every single time. I put the put it on a low flame, about as low as you can get it. Just heat it up for a few minutes, uh, and that helps the oil soak in. And I, a couple times I walked away and I forgot, and I came back and it was all smoking. So now every time I do this, I've set a, a timer, a mm -hmm. kitchen timer for about five minutes. It doesn't even need to be that long. So I don't forget to turn it off. But then a couple of times I got lazy and I didn't do this. I still oiled it, I just didn't heat it. And I discovered it really didn't make any difference. As long as I oiled it, it still works okay. So now I only do that every once in a while, just to kind of bake the seasoning in a little bit. Now, I think one of the things that made that possible is that we have extremely well um, seasoned right. pans. They're already very, very but well But every seasoned. time you cook something with that's greasy and you don't use soap, you're seasoning it again to a certain extent. Yeah. So, now that was something with baked on, baked on stuff. If, if you're doing something that's not as baked on, you can just wipe it out when, you, when you're done. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So here I am now, <clears throat> frying up a couple of eggs for some breakfast sandwiches. Put some oil in there. Just to show you how 
how well this works that it just does not stick. This is kind of a small egg. I got these some from a friend of mine who has some chickens. Uh, but this is a perfect size for a, little, for a breakfast sandwich on an English muffin. <clears throat> Notice that this doesn't stick any more than it does wood on Teflon. It just, it just it's a perfect surface for cooking, and that's because it's well seasoned and well maintained. Oh. <clears throat> I'm out of sliced cheese, so I'm going to put a little bit of grated cheese on it. And that looks just about right. Now I'm going to let that cool for just a couple of minutes because it's too hot to touch right now. As soon as it cools a little, all I have to do is just take a paper towel and just wipe that out. I don't even need to bother with soaking it in water or anything like that. And that will actually Every time you do this kind of cooking, it actually adds to the seasoning of the uh, of the pan. Okay, so I cooked two eggs on here, made two breakfast sandwiches, and I let it cool while I ate my two sandwiches. So now it's time to clean it. And you can see that it's just not really all that dirty. All you have to do basically is just wipe it down with a paper towel. Wipe it clean, and the oil that's left is actually what will help to season it for the next time. <clears throat> and there you go. It's all clean and ready to go very easy. So now I've showed you what we do to clean it and there are two things, two cardinal rules, once again I'll mention them that I mentioned in the beginning. Never use soap. Now if you have one that's particularly disgusting <laughs> you can use just a little bit of, of soap but use it uh, a smallest amount that you can and don't use it very often because it will destroy the uh, the seasoning and you have to re-season it if you use it all the time. You can use it every once in a great while but basically don't use soap. And the other is always oil it every single time. Um, I actually had a comment from a woman who was say, saying, she was asking me about it and she said she's tried cast iron several times and then she always threw them away because they always rusted on her. Well I just suspect that she wasn't oiling it properly. And so if you if you oil it right every single time it'll maintain the seasoning and it won't rust on you. So I just want to show you some of the different pots that we've got. Well, this is this is actually our largest one. Um, we cook a lot of like soups and sauces and things like that in here. Um, and once again we've never had a problem with cooking acid tomato based stuff in here. It works fine. One of the things I love about this one, I'm going to mention real quick, is because it's cast iron I can cook like a whole big pot of beans like all day or cook a roast in there like all day on a really low heat and it does really really good job. It's kind of like its own Dutch oven kind of a thing. Now we love this pot but to be honest with you see this these little things in here I hate them. They drive him crazy. I don't know what they're for. 
Well, they're supposed to help make sure that when stuff goes up to the top, it drips right back down into the, it condenses and goes back down into the soup so stuff doesn't just collect up in the top of the but lid what from what I read. What happens is that this is practically impossible to clean. Anything that you put on there, you wipe across there, and these things will tear it apart. If you use a sponge or that, that metal, you know, scrubby thing, a paper towel, no matter what you put on there, it tears it apart, and you can't get in the edges. You end up using a toothbrush around all those little edges, and it's really horrible. So I would recommend, if you go looking for a pot, try to find one that does not have these in it. The little bumpies. Yep. So we don't even ever even use this lid anymore. You can see that it's not well maintained like the rest of them because I just simply don't use it anymore because it's impossible to clean. Now um, we do want to point out that this is a lodge, lodge cast iron. They, they make good cast iron. Mm. They really do. The little bumps on there just seem to be sort of a lid style that I've run across on other things that I've never bought but I've seen before too. I'm going to show you a few more of our pans, and these happen to be Lodge also. Um, here's a beautiful big skillet. Oh my goodness, I enjoy using this. Um, you can see it's, it's beautiful and shiny. This is from Lodge. This is such a nice size for being able to cook when I need a larger surface, but I still need the sides. Um, this lid came with it. Um, also says Lodge on it. Um, of course, I don't put this baking in the oven um, more than 400 degrees. It can handle up to 400. And so it works great on stovetop and you can bake with it as long as you don't go, I mean I I don't think I need to go above 400 very often anyway. I'm not planning on you know cooking french fries with a lid so um, that that's that one. Now this is my standard absolutely use it all the time cast iron. Um, this is also Lodge. Uh, it happens to be a Cracker Barrel edition. Isn't that pretty? We got it at Cracker Barrel. I love Cracker Barrel. Now this is a dual purpose. This is really one of my favorite frying pans. It's a good size for, you know, it's just the two of us. So, makes a great frying pan. And then I have this very nice kettle. Once again, it's Lodge. It's a really nice cooking kettle. This is a good size when I'm wanting to put together things like spaghetti sauce. That one is only about half as deep as this one. Right. Now, I actually, if I'm using this one, and I, you know how much he hates to clean the bumps, fits right on top. It's and the I, same size. It's the same size. I use it as the lid all the time. Now, I have hung on to this, uh, I've hung on to the lid that irritates Bill, because if the time would ever come that I really need to be cooking with both of them in a pinch, this will still be a good lid for, you know, for this. So, yes, these are... My real, you know, this is my real constant standby. This one, I just keep back here and absolutely love it. <laughs> now, we actually have quite a bit of cast iron. <laughs> we also have a couple of others that are not cast iron that we use for boiling eggs and a few different things. Sure, small, sure. small saucepans and things. Because some that are enameled, you but, know. Yeah, yeah, but most of what we use is cast iron. So, down here. <laughs> um, this little one, Elizabeth likes this one, I think because it's it's lightweight and it's easy for her compared to these. Some of these are really heavy. She likes to use that. I don't like it because I have trouble with getting my spatula in there, but she seems to like that a lot. He uses a bigger spatula than I do. I yeah. use a little one. These, it's actually a set of three, came with a third one that was even smaller than this. You got the wooden handles. The wooden handles are nice because you can just pick them up. If you're going to use this, you got to use a... Um, pot holder. Pot holder or your burning hand, but these you can just pick up. But these you don't want to use in the oven. Well, in fact, um, I think that for endurance, if you really want to go for endurance, the wooden handles are not going to have quite the same real long-term endurance. Um, yeah, these are kind of a little bit loose. They turn a little bit. Yeah. But we got this set as a wedding present 38 years ago. Yeah, that's true. It's been so, 38 years. These are 38 years old, and we've been using them, and you can see that they're still holding up fine. Um, like you said, you don't want to bake with them, although we cook with them all the time. And, of course, you would not want to put that over an open fire. And then... Here's Bill's favorite. I love this one. I use this one and this one both. Uh, they're both the same size around, but this one doesn't have any edges on it. It's very nice and easy to get a spatula in here around. You can see I cooked my egg on it earlier in the video. Yeah. So. What's nice with that is that um, if you put the heat down kind of low and give it a chance, 
it'll heat all the way to the outside edges. So even though it'll be a little hotter in the middle, I can have better luck with cooking with that on, on a smaller flame than would be in a normal pan. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention one more thing. Two more things, actually. Um, one is that I know there are probably going to be people that will watch this that just would not want to be using very many paper towels. And, um, you know, you can use... You know, you can use like a, a dish towel um, to do the drying, um, and it kind of depends on what you want to do in terms of rubbing the oil in. Sometimes even if you just rub really hard with your hands, it might work. But the point you got to remember is that this is cast iron. It's got oil on it. So if you decide that you're going to have some kind of a, a natural towel that you're going to use, be prepared that it's going to be stained, um, and it kind of probably needs to be designated. Um, and so you don't want to try to use nice kitchen towels or hand towels um, because, it, you know, they'll, it'll mess them up. So I just wanted to kind of mention that. Now, the last thing was that if you do find that something has just really rusted, it got forgotten, something got sat in it too long, or it's just somehow ended up all rusted, they are savable. Now, it's going to take a little scrubbing. you got to really scrub that rust. Bill even suggested that some really fine sandpaper could even be used. These are heavy iron. They're not going to just fall apart on you. You can't, you know, break them because you're rubbing on them. So try to get as much rust off as you can, and then just give it a... I would warm it a little bit as soon as it's really clean and dry, as much as you can get the rust off. Warm it up, rub that oil in, and then if you need to, put it back in the oven for a night again. But um, it can be rescued, and it can go back to a beautiful, beautiful um, seasoning again. So they really are very savable, and they will really last. All right. <laughs> Okay, so that's what, the way we clean and care for our cast iron. Now, there are probably many different ways to do it, and I'm sure that there are other people out here out who do things different ways, and we'll probably hear you know some of the different ways in the comments. Um, but that's the way we do it. We've done it for years that way, and it's always worked well for us. So I hope it's been helpful for you. Yeah, we're just trying to share what we have found that works yeah. and um, in terms of longevity and in terms of um, really nice cooking um, we really love cast iron and we know we'll have these pans forever and pass them on to our children right. so absolutely so thank you for joining us um, we appreciate you guys very much please like and subscribe and God bless you and anyway, we'll see you later All right. bye 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 <laughs> I wanted to mention like two more things. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Turn it over again. I have my finger in front of it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Blooper. <clears throat>